Hi. Howdy. Welcome to this week's show. We just rustled something together, but it's full of delight and quirky, interesting stuff. It is. In this, uh, in this episode, if you like, we are going back to the mid-90s when everyone was collecting easy listening funk stuff. Yeah. Well, in this country, certainly, anyway. Yeah. But, uh, this one is from Germany, and it is Orchestra Maurice Pop. It's an orchestra, and this is Monkey Doodle. Lots of good stuff on this. Yeah, nice cover too. It is nice. I like it, I like it a lot. Yeah. I've got plenty of news this week that I've remembered. Brilliant, because I've got none. Right. Cool. Anyway, shall we uh, move on swiftly? We could do, yeah, because next up, after this gorgeous bit of singing, uh, we're going to go to uh, an old uh, vinyl vulture fave, and this is Spies and Dolls by the John Gregory Orchestra. The first of two John Gregory outings today, so yeah, let's go with Spies and Dolls. <coughs> yeah, yeah, the music has it's been around longer now, the gap is longer yeah. than what it was from when it came out. That's right, it's true. Crazy. Yeah, we're yeah anyway, stuff. sorry, we were chatting amongst ourselves there. So Brad, you said you've got a lot on your, on your mind. I've got a lot to talk about. So I'm going to start with the first thing that comes to mind, which is... <laughs> um, I've forgotten it already. Forgotten it already. Uh, Friday the 13th of December, the Pumps are playing at some big breaks. Oh, break they are, event, aren't uh, they? Yeah, that's right. I saw, I saw that. Yeah. Then, and and uh, yeah, freestylers are playing with Navigator and stuff like Those that. Those are people playing at Chris Loads. Friday night the 13th of December. Cool. Cool. I'm up for going to that. Yeah. Oh, go. and there's another thing that I did see today, actually. I've got a couple. It wouldn't be um, Format playing somewhere, would it? Oh, Format's playing at um, uh, Jazzology. That's right. Yeah. On the 30th, On the 30th of, of November. November. I'm going to go to that. Yeah, I think we should. I think yeah. we should. Yeah. I'm going to go to that. He Make comes sure to us. To that. That was, we'll uh, go down to him. Yeah, that was on my list of things to talk about. Cool. And also, uh, the format is playing in Skeg's Disco Shed. What? Yeah, apparently so. Skeg's Disco Shed? That's right. What the hell is Skeg's Disco Shed? Well, the Breaking Bread show that he does. For oh, his, yeah. The uh, West yeah. supposed to do it. Yeah, that we were supposed to do it. I think the format's doing it on our night. <laughs> what? We've been relegated. It's fine. For man. Fine, it's right. Skeg does that. Oh, I see how it is, I see how it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway, yeah, so there you go. Um, anyway, next up we have got a bit of Keith Mansfield. Yeah, we were going to play Soul Thing, but we've already played it, so uh, yeah. we're going to play right, Boogaloo by uh, Keith Mansfield. Yeah, this is a great album, if you haven't got it, it pick is. it up. It's a really good one to have in your yes, that's right. I used to have a few Polish copies of this, do you Did remember? You? Yeah, yeah, with different sleeve. Yeah, very cool indeed. Anyway, next bit of news. Mm -hmm. So, sick note. Yeah, he's nearly there, isn't he? He's nearly there. He's 85% nearly there. is what I saw today of the way on the Kickstarter. So, that wonderful little record shop slash... Uh, dub plate, place. Dub yeah. plate pressing company in yeah. South East London is going to... It's going to happen. It's going to happen, yeah. It's yeah. going to happen. That's good news, that is. That's really good news. Totally. So, yeah. I, sh I should also point out that last week I said that Patrick from Canada gave me a tune. I know, I saw that, apparently yeah. he didn't. So I've no idea where I got it from. But there you go. No yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, this is nice. Really cool. Yeah, it's a lovely track. But again, there's lots of tracks on this album. There is. There is. Yeah. Next up, Chris. Next up, we have got uh, the Four Instants on this discotheque album. Now, there's another album that's got the same sleeve that is crap. But uh, this is good, and I can't remember what one we're going to play. I think we're going to play Watermelon Man. Most people got this for the track called Bogatini, which is, I think, Glencatini or something like that. But either way, it's cool. Yeah, a bit, a bit of mod action. Yeah, it's nice, this. Yes. I think I had something to talk about. I had three well, bits of those, and that was it. Is it really? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Mr. Brown got in contact with me today. Oh, we, have, <laughs> we haven't interviewed him. We haven't been in contact. So I've actually managed to secure us Sorry. two copies of his single. But we should go around there. Though. We need to go around there, we do. Uh, I did explain that it's, that, that it's bad enough. It's, it's, it's hard enough for me and Brad to even see each other, isn't it, sometimes? You know what I mean? So there you go. It's a challenge. But, uh, it is a challenge. It Especially is. the last couple of months. The, um, 
I did see that. Oh, well, I'm going to remember for the next track. All right. Uh, I remember for the next track. I'm not going to watch from now, but I did see some things. Cool. Cool. Right. Well, next up is on Marvel Art Records, Les Baxter. And that's 101 strings. I'm sure it's got a US uh, release as well. Uh, but yeah, um, a taste of soul. Yes, bro. Right, yeah, so, um, foremost chill. Imagine 30 years. Obviously, he used to do the Soul Man stuff. Soul Man tapes, they've been reissued, which not covers anything like that, and you can get them on the Digger's Dozen side. That's right, so from, 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 from uh, the magical man himself, Maxwell. Yeah, and, and 100 uh, copies of each, and volume 1 to 4 is already up. Yeah, so you need to go and get them quick. I need to get them quick. I just need to get paid first, and then I'll try and get them. But, uh, but also, Digger's Dozen was on uh, this week as well, and uh, Malachi from... Um, Dynamite Cuts, is it? He was there playing his stuff along with a few others, and Disco Jeff was there last month. What? So, I yeah, didn't see that. I know, I know, I know. And it was a good little set as well, because I listened to it. But, uh, yeah, I, it's cool. I know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is very nice. So, yeah, Les Baxter, that's 101 Strings. Tasted soul, but there's loads of nice bits on this. Recorded in London. There you go. It sounds it. It does. Yeah. Well, anyway, we went out for a drink with our man John Schroeder afterwards. <laughs> Talking to John Schroeder, as I've got to remember to give that guy. Uh, so there's a chat. Format got in touch with me and said there's a guy. He, actually, no. He gave a guy my telephone number. And, again. Again. And um, the guy wants to use our footage of the John Schroeder interview because he's doing a Samonde documentary. He's been doing it for a while apparently and he's been he was working with Matt to do some interviews. And stuff. Right, okay. So of course he can have our footage. Um but I've just got a reply. But I'm look I once I've got some more details. It's gonna cost I'll, him. Cost him a hug. It's gonna cost him, it's gonna cost him two hugs if he's handsome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, we're going to have to get, and I'm going to get in touch with him straight after this when we're in the pub. Cool. Uh, let him know he can have the footage. I don't know, I've still got the original, I do have the original somewhere. Don't know where, but the ones on King of Robert, high quality anyway. Cool. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. Next up, we've got uh, John Gregory, a man of all, man for all seasons. And there's so much to choose from in here. And uh, this will have uh, Mr. Cy Vulture sort of like jumping around, I'm sure, because obviously he's part of the Vinyl Vulture old school uh, website that uh, most of us got all of our information from to get these things. So uh, anyway, but we're going to play one of the tracks on here. That was from the Sound Gallery um, comp back in 95. 95. 24 years ago, man. It's crazy. That is crazy. Uh, and that's when it was hip then. And now, 24, nearly 25 years later, we're playing it all over again. And it really doesn't seem that long ago. Anyway, we're going to go with Jaguar because we've already played a shake on one of the previous shows. We should have dressed up for this issue, shouldn't we? You know I mean, like Jason King sort of yeah, style. I like that. <laughs> So our man, uh, all of a sudden, yeah, he does a night regularly. I love the name of it. Wax on, wav off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and he does it at that uh, arcade bar south of the water. That's right. Well, the one in Brixton. No, I think it might be near there. Yeah, right. I think it's actually in Brixton. I can't remember what it's called. Fist full of court. No, I can't remember what it's called. Something court. Fist full of fist. Fist full of fist. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to have to go down there. I want, I mean, I want to play it in an arcade, but I'd love that. Mm. So I'm just putting a hint out there. He did a night, didn't he, with, um, on, was it Monday, uh, the yes. chip shop in Brixton yeah, as well? Yeah, Billy Business was there. That's right, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, he's a busy boy. Mm. He's a busy boy. He's a busy boy. He's a lovely lad. He's a cheeky uh, lad. He's a cheeky lad. So if he well. wants us to come down and play at the arcade with him, we don't mind. <laughs> but there's <laughs> a t-shirt, right. wax on, wear fog. I'm going to get that too. Yeah. I like that. I like the subtlety in the message. Mm. Appeals on many levels. Yeah? Right. So check that out anyway. Yeah. Cool. Right, yeah, so from the UK, we're going back over to Germany for Max Greger and his orchestra. Uh, this is a killer album, this is. And um, I can't remember which one we're going to play. There's a lot of breaks on this. There's like a version of Honky Tonk Woman spinning wheel. There's a big break on uh, Aquarius. Um, but we're going to play Soul House, which is a bit more of a moddy sort of track. Wonderful. Fair enough. Yeah, this is wicked. So, yes. I would have loved to have gone to a club in the 60s and just 
sort of like cut some rug to this sort of dance up to a go like this <laughs> yeah that's right and they're all like this you know what I mean like you're groovy yeah bad teeth you know what I mean <laughs> yeah love it yeah it's a good album, really good album. And honestly, I haven't played it in years, so um, I thought, let's have a listen. Let's see what's in this uh, section over here. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Much. It is cool. But yeah, loads of good things on this. <clears throat> anyway, our break of the week, we've probably played before, I can't, don't dare really. We haven't, but, I think. Anyway, either way, but yeah, a bit of Brian Bennett, uh, Illustrated London Noise, and uh, Bennett and Hawkshaw rip it up on Soul Mission. Unmistakable beats of Brian Bennett. It's got a lovely cover. It does. Uh, Andy Higgs would be very not, uh, fond of this because it's got the old fisheye lens of uh, Brian with his big chunky shoes on top of his drums in his shed by the looks of it. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And exactly as Larry does. He does. And then a bit serious on the back. The um I'm talking to Mr. Higgs, I haven't seen him. They've got lined up for the next uh, Sunday session at the old uh, chip shop. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. Maybe I'll get the call. <laughs> You, you may have noticed now that me and Brad just hustle out of way. Do you know what? I've actually been offered a cut of gigs lately and turned them down, Chris. Really? Yeah, they clash with things. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Should have okay. probably contacted you. <laughs> Brave. <Braver. laughs> actually, yeah, but no, I'm not even kidding. I'm like, nah. Sorry. Nah, too busy. I only do jazzology. Andy Higgs night. Wax on web off if we're wanted. Yeah. I did see that, um, um, old, um, uh, my brain's gone. Rob Life is doing uh, the Black Dove as well. He's doing... Uh, oh, he is. He's Punk for the Pops. Pops. That's yeah, right, I think yeah. it's this, this week even, maybe. Cool. Lovely guy. Lovely guy. Lovely guy. Anyway. Anyway, next up is our theme of the week. And I got this in a charity shop. This week, Record Breakers by Roy Castle. Best. If you want to be the best, that's right. So if you're... Uh, uh, in the UK in about 1981 this would have been on the TV <clears throat> but uh, that long ago yeah it must but, have gone on so a little bit longer than that I remember it well yeah yeah but we were still alive but I but alive. there's uh, but I, I thought oh you know what I don't have that theme you know it was a pound in a charity shop and I, I mean, looked at the, the cover alone yeah but look who's on it you got um, doo -doo 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 -doo, Harry Roach uh, Stan Reynolds. There's probably a, a lot of DNA amongst Trevor a lot Basto, of the we played today. Kenny Salmon, um, Barry D'Souza. So it's pretty much like the KPM dudes all sort of like doing this. And it's pretty funky. So we are going to play Pete the Feet from the Record Breakers album for our theme of the week. Yes, we are. Anyone that's a certain age, well, that's obviously Wood Castle. Tapping away, man of many talents. Yeah, I loved record breakers. It was cool. I liked Roy Castle. Was always smiling. Norris McSquirt. Yeah. Norris McGurter. And his brother was killed by, in, by um, his twin brother was killed by an IRA bomb, wasn't he? Was he really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Pink Feet. And uh, talking to Pete, well, Pete McLennan, yeah. his mum was on the front cover of the book, Tapped with Roy Castle. No. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Maybe this is who he's talking about. Maybe. Never mind. I don't know. Yeah, I doubt very know. much. But, yeah. Maybe we've uncovered some gossip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So quickly, films I've seen. Oh, yeah, go on. Midway. Awful fucking movie. It looks, it looks like Pearl Harbor, yeah, which was an Pearl awful Harbor. fucking movie. It's Pearl Harbor. Are you ready for this? It's Pearl Harbor with a bad script. No. Pearl Harbor is, you know, when people used to ask me what's the worst film I've ever seen, I would say Pearl Harbor. And now it's... Well, Midway's not as bad because I expected less. Okay, fair enough. Some of the effects... Do you know what's good about Midway over Pearl Harbor? A lot of the stories are very true. Right, okay. So I'll give it that, even though the script's not very Whereas good. Whereas with Pearl Harbor, it was just that was real... Fucking ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. But it's got all those leading comments, like, you know, the guy coming off the flight deck saying, I'm a bit scared, uh, should I do this? And he's like, oh, you're going to make it, man, this is your country, you know the guy's going to die. Yeah, you know? It's so leading, like, spelt out, you know, the Trump voters. And the... Um, <laughs> 
And I saw The Good Liar, which is Hell and Mirror. Oh, that looked quite good. It's really good for three quarters. It's really shit ending, man. That's the problem. You Does know? she get her kit on? She doesn't, Chris. <laughs> That's why it was disappointing. I, was ex- I mean, she used to all the time. It's no the cook, the thief, the wife and his lover, yeah, is it, yeah. really? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so then the movies I've seen, I've been off because it was my birthday, so I took a few days off. Oh, and... that's right. Yeah, I've been off. Shit. Day. Yep. I'm very forgetful of these things. Don't worry about that. I'm old now, mate. Yeah. Cool. Anyway. We will catch you next week with news of our gigs at arcades <laughs> and, and everything else. But, yeah, speak to you soon. Bye-bye.